Hey LaGrand Alive, this is Coffee with Will, brought to you by Northwest Furniture and Mattress, Grand Ron Hospital, AnythingToDigital.com, and Seabright Dentistry. And I'm here today with Lori McNeil, who is Miss, Mrs. Oregon, United States, as well as a traveling educator, a wife, a mother, and many other things. And she's here today to talk with me about her pageantry herself and what she's doing now after the competition. So thank you so much for joining me today, Lori. Thank you for having and, me. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you got to the place of being Mrs. Oregon and how you got there. Yeah, tell me how you got there. Great. So <laughs> it's actually kind of a unique story. I was researching scholarships for grad school and in my Google search, a link became another link and another link and different things within pageantry actually popped up on my screen. And I was intrigued, but not at a position in my life where I could pursue that at the time. Mm. And so I, since then, have graduated from graduate school, two masters actually, since then, and um, was at a different place to really consider all that pageantry had to offer and all the different unique things that I am passionate about with marriage and family and community service and um, my platform work in education and literacy, and so it was a it was a great opportunity to pursue something very unique after grad school. So that's a question I was I was hoping to ask you. Many people don't know that there's a difference between Miss and Misses because when I was first approached last year, we did a quick video on Lori McNeil, which I'll actually cut to um, right now for a quick little snippet. I love traveling. I love discovering new places, meeting new people, learning about new cultures. As an educator, I just really love learning in all aspects of that. Not necessarily in a traditional classroom, but just in the world around me all the time. And I actually had the opportunity to start my master's program at Jerusalem University College, and I lived on Mount Zion in Israel. And then ever since then, I just it really, my passion and my interest for traveling just really, really flourished. Since then, I actually have been an educator in many other countries as well. So I've been in education for 18 years, and I actually started out um, teaching and tutoring um, in a small community actually in Idaho, and that's where I got my first taste of what it meant to really help someone um, increase their own skills and meet their own goals, and then from then, I've actually been a music teacher, I've taught in elementary schools, I've taught in preschools, I've taught in prisons, community education programs. Charlie's First Day um, is a project that took me 86 different copies. I had no idea when I started down the journey of writing my first book. I didn't have a clue of the process, but as I got into it and really started developing the characters more and more and really started thinking about the strategies that would have the most impact on people's lives right now. They could actually increase literacy levels right now today. And so it started out with that, trying to find that common ground with other cultures and it actually blossomed into a discovery of an increase for literacy skills across any culture, even, if, even within my own. So now that being said, you said that your platform was literacy and you are also a self-published author of children's books yes. um, that are available on amazon.com and they are purposed from what I understand to help children learn um, sort of in a more fun and interesting way. So tell me a little bit about why literacy for you as an educator and how, how is that manifesting in your books? I am very passionate about teaching literacy. Literacy opens up so many more doors to the world and to understanding things around you every, every day. And in, in having increased literacy skills really allows someone to look at things differently and to pursue maybe other opportunities um, than they wouldn't have thought of before. Maybe it's an adventure that they have, you know, learned about in a book, or if it's a personal development book, maybe that's an opportunity that they can think of themselves in a different way. So having stronger literacy skills and learning how to be a strong reader really does open up the mind to all kinds of other possibilities within the world. And so I'm very passionate about people meeting their goals and becoming the best versions of themselves that they can be. Hmm. And I think that literacy is definitely a foundational skill for approaching everything else in life. 
Huh. And so I'm very passionate about that. And then as an educator, of course, working with students in the classroom and in all these different settings, it's just, it's so invigorating to me to work with a student of any age and be able to work with them in a way that takes their learning deeper and deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. They have stronger critical thinking skills, they have stronger literacy skills, stronger imagination, and they're able to take their own learning deeper and mm. deeper, the stronger that those skills get. And so that's very exciting to journey alongside of somebody that is learning new things and experiencing new things all the time. My books um, are very unique. I actually did a lot of research about them prior to even writing the first sure. draft. We actually have some have yes, some of them here. I'll absolutely. take one and you can take okay. one. We can hold it up for the camera okay. over there, right there. This so. is the first one. Charlie's First Day is the first in a 10 book series. Charlie's Outdoor Adventure is the second book that was just released on Amazon last month. So look, these kind of look like um, w way better versions of stick figures that I could draw. <laughs> I, bet that, I, mean, I have a wonderful books, so. illustrator. Yeah, she does yeah, a fabulous yeah. job. <laughs> so the research that I conducted prior to starting this series was very important that they, it was very unique. I wanted the series to be very unique. There are a lot of books that um, teach teachers or parents how to teach. And then, of course, there's all kinds of fun books that take children through adventures. But I wanted a series that was very different. So through my stories, I actually build in very strategic strategies and skills that teach kids how to read within the storyline itself. Hmm. So they're very unique in that way. So for instance, the first one I'm calling my foundational book for the series, and it does have more text in it than a typical children's book, sure. because this is designed to be more or less um, a supplemental piece of curricula sure. that a parent can use at home or that a teacher can use in the classroom. It's designed very unique in that way, but of course, wonderful enhancing um, illustrations throughout. The second one starts what will be a little bit more typical for the remaining books in the series, and that's to be There's much more. Books, there right? are ten There's books. There are ten books in this There's series. There's ten books. <laughs> So this All of one which ha have to have a minimum of 50 drafts for week for you. Yes, this first <laughs> draft took me 86. So this book took me 86 drafts. The second one took me 53. Uh huh. So, so they, we're getting we're getting lower. We're getting maybe lower. Eventually, we'll get down into like you know 30s or 20s. Yeah, you know? maybe. <laughs> I'm very passionate about having. Um, all of the strategies really match the outcomes that I'm after. Sure. And so I, I really take a lot of time with each sentence, with each page, to make sure that all of the elements in each of the stories really match um, the intention mm. of, of how I've designed the series. So um, I spend a lot of time. I actually started writing this one. So because I am a wife and a mother, yes. I actually write. It, at midnight, between about midnight and six. Oh wow! <laughs> so in the middle of the night, so after the family's sleep? in like, bed, is that, is that like do you <laughs> subsist off of no sleep, or is that a part in maybe like three hours in there somewhere during the day? You know, this this experience in being Mrs. Oregon United States has really taught me focus mm. and really taught me how to prioritize better. Mm. So I'm grateful for the development of those skills that I have gotten. I've always been pretty strong. But it's been amazing um, how much I have been able to achieve by learning stronger leadership, stronger focus, stronger prioritizing, and how much more I'm able to accomplish in a 24-hour period. Man, so, there are some days where I'm like, man, I wish I could accomplish more in 24 hours. So maybe I need, maybe I need to go for Mrs. Oregon United States. I yeah, just need maybe. to get married and then grow my hair out, and I can maybe. be in Mrs. Oregon United States and learn maybe. how to get the most out of my 24 hours. It's been an amazing experience. I I have been so grateful. I've learned. Sure. so much and have gotten so much out of this experience met amazing people yeah. very unique once in a lifetime opportunities I'm a published author just all kinds of things that I am so grateful for that I will will forever hold special a special place in my heart absolutely so let's kind of take it a little bit more to a serious level with these books mm -hmm. why is this so I mean why is this important to you? Yes, I think everyone agrees that you know young kids' uh, education and leadership and learning is important. But you're an educator. Mm -hmm. you're, 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 these books are not written for just enjoyment. They're written for education. They're written for learning. Why has education been so much of a serious part of your life? And why do you keep doing it and writing these books? Why do you spend so much? Fifty-three. Why do I on spend them, so you know? much time on these yeah. books? So. Over the years, as an educator, I've been able to work with, of course, 
many different students at varying levels. Mm -hmm. And my heart has just always gone out to those that have struggled with reading. Hmm. And did you struggle with reading when you were younger? I, I actually did not, okay. but I had many friends who did. Hmm. And I would spend a lot of time actually trying to help my friends oh. and help my peers and help those closest to me in my life. Because although I didn't struggle with it, I was affected emotionally by the people that I cared about. Absolutely. And I saw the impact that that had on their self-esteem, on how they viewed themselves and what they were capable of doing. Um, I saw that so much more potential and I saw how that just affected all areas of their life. And then uh, the families as well. Absolutely. So with the parents that were trying so hard to help their son or their daughter or to help someone that they cared about. So I found myself in these roles where I just naturally started helping more and more of my peers and my friends and family and using a gift that I had, something that came very naturally to me in order to help other people. And that has just completely flourished over the years as I was growing up and then as an educator. So it became a passion to me in order to be that influencer of change. Mm -hmm. And so to be that a person that is an influencer of change that literally can change the family tree yeah. is incredibly important to me. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think that we're pretty getting pretty close to being out of time here. What's next on the book level? What are you, what's your next, uh, next step? I've already started working on the third book in the Charlie series, which will be released in the next few months. So my goal is to actually release two books a year. Two books a year. Two books a year. So I will be continually writing. And then I'm also a guest author for other magazines and whatnot as well. So I'm always writing. Absolutely. Even if I'm not teaching in a classroom or being a wife or a mom or the queen of Oregon. Or playing Battleship. <laughs> or playing Battleship. All of the above. I'm always writing. I'm always developing and I'm always writing. And, and so I love to write in that way. So I have actually been invited to Washington, D.C. Wow to participate as a special guest in the National Celebration of Reading, and I've been a special guest of the Barbara Bush Foundation. Wow. So I will be um, participating in a special luncheon with the Bush family. Oh, wow. And in a variety of different events taking place over about 15 hours wow. with different galas and dinners and luncheons and presentations and whatnot. So I'm very honored, very excited to be an invited guest nationally at this that particular event. Absolutely. And so that's actually coming up. I'm going to be leaving here in the next month and I'll be in DC for several days. Wow. Participating with all kinds of events in our nation's capital. So I'm very excited about that. Probably flying on the plane and writing while you're doing it. Absolutely. I, in fact, that's exactly <laughs> what I've been doing. Mo hotels, airports, on the plane. I've, I've spent a lot of time writing in some very interesting locations. <laughs> well, that's the heart of a writer right there. So thank you so much for, tip, for joining me today. It has been downright pleasurable to see you again after a year of um, you doing your thing and uh, after the video was done. And thank you, LeGrand Alive, for tuning in. This has been Coffee with Will, brought to you by Northwest Furniture and Mattress, Grand Ron Hospital, anythingtodigital.com, and Seabright Dentistry. Please like and share this video and tune in to LaGrandalive.tv for more local content.